Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, it's Andy from Big Mac's Workshop and Painting Studio, and this is my first foray into uh, proper converting. As you can see, I'm uh, starting with a Primaris uh, Easy Fit model, and this is eventually going to be a World Eaters Dark Apostle uh, for my Primaris scale um, 40k army. And as you, uh, there you are, that's what I'm going to replace the breastplate with, which is a piece from the Varangard from Age of Sigma, and I'm going to give him his own little cloak, which is also made from the uh, Chaos Warriors uh, from Age of Sigma as well. So as you can see, I've got a lot of work to do get bit, uh, to get them all uh, cut to fit. So I started dremeling in, uh, out the inside edge of the cloak. Now this turned out to be uh, a bit of a mistake, as what I was hoping to do was fit it on under the backpack and get a a nice close fit but I had to change my ideas on that one and I'm using this uh, sort of Kone icon which is, comes from the Blood Crushers uh, kit and I'm going to use that as a greave on the uh, lower right leg That's, yeah his lower right leg so what I've had to do obviously I'm cutting off the, um, the excess bits with a decent pair of snips uh, just to get them out of the way uh, I don't actually need them. After that, I'm going to use a razor saw to cut the um, the arm in half. This allows me to um, get at the bit I'm after. So I've created a um, a sort of a sanding block out of a paper clip. Uh, uh, sorry, a, a cocktail stick. And this is going to give me a nice round shape, so I can it can actually uh, fit into the inside leg. So after a bit of sanding, uh, we're going to get a nice curved. Um, piece, but I'm still going to wind up having to cut the um, it, the front of the leg down anyway. So there we are. I've got a nice uh, flat uh, leg front. Uh, the, uh, the, the the new greave is going on top, and that's going to have to get green stuffed in, uh, which is something I'm not particularly good at. Uh, so the green stuff work is a little bit sketchy, but I have improved out of a lot. Uh, so as you can see, it's not quite a good fit yet. Uh, so the green stuff is going to do all the uh, filling out work just to make it look right. So there we are, we've got a bit of green stuff down. And now what I'm going to do is you going to use some soft silicon tools. And what this is going to do is allow me to move the green stuff around, um, flatten the edges in, also uh, blend them in as best I can. Uh, as you uh, get practice with this sort of thing, it becomes a lot easier and you'll get a lot neater and uh, much nicer finish. Also, it helps um, playing around with all these new tools um, as uh, you do get to learn a little bit about what each tool is capable of and what you want to be using them for. So I'm trying to um, just move the green stuff around and I'm also rolling the um, rolling it a bit like a rolling pin uh, and this helps you uh, get a nice As you can see, I'm, try I'm just uh, moving little bits around. I'm also trying to make a little bit of a lip so it follows the natural shape of the, um, the power armor. Um, trying to recreate something representing the original uh, shape of the power armor with the green stuff. Um, not as easy as, it uh, as I thought it would be, uh, but nothing ever is. So I'm just playing around, just trying to get some, some kind of a lip um, to add a little bit of extra detail onto it. So onto the uh, chest plate now, and I'm going to use a Dremel to cut the inside edges, uh, all that inside, out of the um, Vanguard chest plate. Now this has been done uh, a few tutorials, but he was actually dodging part of this out to me. If I was to um, to replace the back uh, the chest plate as I thought I would do, uh, that's a lot of work. It's a lot easier to um, use it as a um, cover. Now uh, you just carve the inside of the chest plate down. Uh, so I'm just hacking away at the inside of it with a pair of snips and after that I'm going to use a Dremel to just sand away and get rid of all that um, excess plastic so I get a bet much better fit. Now, as you can see the uh, the uh, um, 
the blade I'm using there is pretty dull, so I'm having a bit of a drama, so I actually do replace the blade uh, once we find them. So after a few minutes with the Dremel, which made life a lot easier, I do recommend um, you get one if you do a lot of converting work. Uh, I've got something what will go over the top. Now, as much as uh, with the inside of the um, Varangar's uh, breastplate, I'm going to start hacking away at the um, outside of the uh, chest plate of the Space Marine. And that's going to make the, um, the new chest plate fit while still retaining the uh, shape uh, what I need um, and the, it, uh, the, uh, the joins what I need to keep to make my life a lot easier. And we're back to sanding. This sort of uh, this sort of work takes a lot. Of, you spend a lot of time sanding. I'm using um, a quite a fine grade bit of sandpaper. Um, you don't want to uh, be uh, hacking away at it with a very coarse piece, as uh, you'll wind up with really uh, rough uh, textures. It's okay if you um, hack it, if you're trying to shift a lot, but you um, with uh, small uh, detail models, you need a a nice soft pa um, piece of sandpaper, uh, so you're not um, taking away too much, and you get a much smoother finish. And there we go; the breastplate will now fit, uh, which is a much cooler breastplate than, orig uh, than the original. Uh, loads of detail work, and uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got something very interesting now. What we're going to be working with. So. Always be uh, careful to dry fit your model, your pieces to your models as as uh, you start carving pieces off. Uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. And uh, what, as you all know, once you remove a piece, you can't put it back, but you can take extra off if you need to. So I've just uh, lightly glued the um, breastplate on now, and I'm going to fill the gaps up with a bit of green stuff. Um, which I am knocking about still uh, from some of the older work and what I'm going to do is uh, attempt to recreate some of the um, the cabling what goes on the uh, between the uh, front of the uh, breastplate to the back and uh, to the energy energy pack and that's going to um, just add a little bit extra finish uh, it's also going to um, fill out any uh, holes around uh, what uh, where the, uh, the piece doesn't fit flush uh, so it's going to um, really allow me to uh, get a much more solid um, piece. Okay, so now I've um, found a bit from a Bloodthirster model uh, from my Scarbrand kit. That's kind of going to be a, like a purity seal looking thing. Uh, and what I've had to do is take off the uh, Imperial Relic uh, from his upper thigh and uh, start... Um, Sand away, trying to smooth it out. I'm, I'm going to replace it with that uh, skull motif and a corn icon um, to make him a bit more interesting and get away from that imperial sort of uh, feel. What he is, so as you can see, I'm just uh, trying to carve away as much of the uh, plastic away, but very gently. And uh, obviously, then I'm going to um, rub it down with a bit of sandpaper again. After that, the uh, the new piece will go over the top. So I found a, uh, a skeleton uh, skull, and what I've done is quite simply just glue the two together. Because uh, I've decided that one skull isn't enough, I'm going to put two together and uh, use that as a uh, sort of a more elaborate um, uh, trophy, uh, which is also going to be uh, added extra de decoration onto it at a later date. So as you can see, there you are, I've uh, done a bit of more of the, um, no, cancel that bit. So back to the cloak, uh, and this is where I really messed up. Uh, I've, I'm still working on the idea of that I'm going to put it on underneath the uh, backpack, so uh, I'm still trying to file away at the um, thing, get it really nice and thin so I can uh, position it well. and. Uh, yeah, it's a very difficult and uh, slow process as this um, the cloaks are really thick, so I'm really having to 
and sand away at the um, inside and the outside to get it to fit right. So we've got what I feel is a nice fit to the backpack. It um, goes together fairly well and I've, as you can see I've put a little notch in it as well so it um, grips around the uh, inside edge of the uh, backpack. So after what felt like an eternity of uh, sanding with a Dremel, it's got something that's really thin uh, and makes it a lot more easy to move around, a lot more easy to um, position as well. Now this did actually benefit me in the long run, but right at this stage, it hadn't actually fin um, finished the idea of what I needed it to do, which was enable it to go underneath the backpack. So there's another idea of another backpack what I had knocking about. I'm just trying them out, trying out different ones just to see which one works. So uh, after all that, I uh, snipped off the inside of the backpack mounting on the back uh, on, the, uh, on the dude's back, and then had to replace it. I'm now cutting the backpack into uh, sorry the cloak into three separate sections because this is going to go uh, as a separate piece and I'm going to reposition it so it's not going over the shoulders, it's going underneath and it's just coming from underneath the backpack rather than as a uh, sort of a more of a Wolfen style uh, cloak. Yeah, here we are. Of course uh, I was trying to um, be helpful to myself. I uh, thought remove that uh, backpack section uh, would be a really good idea. Turns out, no. Uh, so uh, yeah, I uh, dropped a massive brick there. So what I've had to do is um, get some uh, green stuff and rebuild one. But whilst I'm uh, doing this, I'm looking at the uh, front and decided rather than bitting a bat in, which is not helping me in any way, I'm um, going to start working just on one piece at a time. And uh, I'm, I've decided I'm going to replace his right knee um, with something a bit more interesting. So there we are, we've got a, uh, well, something resembles the backpack mountain now. Um, nothing spectacular, just a nice green stuff square. As you can see I'm uh, adding a bit more detail work to the um, cabling going between the front and the back. Um, trying to replicate uh, the GW ones. It's not the greatest bit of green stuff work, I ain't gonna lie. But it does do the job and it does take the paint. So. I'm definitely learning a hell of a lot of um, information about how to manage green stuff. Um, it's definitely something I'm going to be uh, doing again in the future, but uh, the green stuff work <laughs> at this stage is quite lacking. And as you can see, I'm just uh, moving it around really gently using that silicon tool. Uh, the silicon tools are, I found much better than the um, metal ones, as they do flex, so it allows you to um, add. Uh, it it moves around better on the uh, green stuff, so it does uh, it doesn't just um, pull and tear. And now I'm starting to fill out uh, the do the exact same thing as what I did on the right side with the cable in to the left. So I'm looking around at various bits, and I've found a skull uh, from an old trophy rack, and that skull is going to get cut in half and replace the right knee. So, same as before, decent pair of snips, hacking away at all the bits I don't need, uh, to try and, but um, keeping, uh, keeping the blades away from the uh, section I'm after, uh, which is quite fiddly, because these pieces are quite small, but it, um, it is important to try and keep any other detail you've got on the model, what you're uh, trying to keep. So after attacking it with a razor saw and then a bit of uh, sandpaper, as you can see it's a really small bit, I'm really struggling to keep hold of it, so I'm using a pair of tweezers in order to... Uh, uh, show you show it to the camera and now I'm going to do um, much the same as what I did with the Grieve, I'm just going to uh, slice away ever so gently at the um, an, other knee plate and uh, try and get a nice flat straight um, cut uh, where I can 
and just dry fitting again just to make sure it fits it, it sits nicely and it turns out it was actually it wasn't actually a bad fit it's just awkward so now I'm uh, happy with the fit I'm gonna uh, add a little bit of glue in uh, just to hold it steady a bit of plastic glue uh, because I've been, although I use a lot of super glue on this figure, uh, I wanted the uh, model, I wanted it to dry slowly, uh, so I could move the um, skull around a little bit and get it to sit right. Uh, the problem with super glue is obviously uh, it dries instantly, which is both it's, uh, which is great at sometimes, but in uh, times like this when you need to be able to move things around a little bit, uh, the instant set wasn't uh, was going to be un unhelpful. So now I'm making sure it's just um, sitting right uh, and I've got something that looks a bit more interesting and I'm going to fill the gaps again with the green stuff exactly the same way as I did the Grieve um, using only tiny bits of green uh, green stuff and just blending it back in with the uh, softer um, sculpting tools. So um, my wife Sarah uh, donated me a, a bit of um, dress jewellery um, which I'm going to use as uh, chains and that's going to go around his right, uh, his left leg and also go around his, um, the, new, the trophy what I made from the cornate symbol and I'm using a uh, piece of uh, cocktail stick to uh, drop some glue in uh, exactly the right sort of space this, this is obviously super glue and I'm just uh, it's quite fiddly because obviously the chain moves around a lot uh, so just get it glued in one place first and then just glue it um, gently with the uh, glue. Uh, I decided to um, to leave it on what, on the full strand for uh, the time being uh, just because it gives me a bit extra to work with uh, for holding it. And uh, then I, I start to wrap it around after cutting it to length and we've got something a bit more interesting. Nice big chain around his leg because why the hell not? This is a world, this is a world eater dude. He's going to look a bit nuts. So I've done exactly the same thing with the uh, skull um, and corn icon. Um, uh, again, a uh, bit the same bit of uh, chain, just to uh, make it look like it's being held on somehow. So now I'm going to start work on the backpack uh, region. So as you can see, I'm using a very old style uh, backpack, mainly because it's kind of cool. And I've uh, cut to fit some pieces of uh, that cloak. Now I've uh, attempted to get some kind of um, reasonable fit. And as you can see, I'm just I'm just dry fitting using a bit of um, uh, blue tack and green stuff just to hold it down. And just trying out where it goes together. So this is what's going to become um, the um, Power Mall of the Accursed Crozier, which is also from a Varangard kit. Uh, I'm going to remove that bit between the um, Chaos Star and the handle. I'm also going to um, keep the uh, uh, right arm as well. So we're keeping all the leather work and just uh, trying to get a nice flat even um, cut uh, what, so we don't have to um, dismantle it too much with a bit of sandpaper. I'm also going to remove the spear point as well as that would look a bit weird. So I'm actually building the um, Crozius from the Chaos Star and a few other bits that I've got knocking around. So um, uh, because it's going to be joined this way, it's going to have to be pinned. Uh, I made a mistake, I didn't like bore a hole in with a safety pin or something right in the centre, so it's quite a little bit off-centre. Um, that's, that's a lesson learned for later. So if you do if you do, do um, this sort of drilling, remember to use a, a, a like a pin or something just to uh, pilot a hole for the drill. So I've got a paper clip in there, I've done exactly the same thing on the other end. And we've got a nice hard hard fit. So what I'm doing now is building the hammerhead. And I'm using two Chaos Warrior hammerhead sections, and they're going back to back on the Chaos Star at the top. Uh, it'll give you a really interesting uh, looking uh, hammer. 
and I also need an upper arm for the dude so I've round, I found a uh, Primaris pistol arm because it was um, sort of aiming in the right direction and I'm going to cut the entire uh, lower half of the arm apart and uh, remove it right up to the elbow so with a bit of uh, blue tack uh, testing the fit and this is what we've got got a very cool looking power mall uh, a little bit different the arm does fit quite nicely it's also got a bit of extra trim and uh, as you can see it all sort of links together quite nicely with the additional skull motifs and such so I'm also uh, dry fitting the uh, cloak again as uh, this thing <laughs> I was really uh, struggling with to get it to uh, go together right like I say, uh, I made some serious errors making that um, piece of cloak. And now I've got the uh, first two sections to, um, to fit right. I'm going to uh, glue them together uh, using poly cement to get a better bond, uh, mainly to get a better bond. Uh, and I'm doing it whilst it's blue tacked to the back, uh, so it's uh, got somewhere to uh, just to rest whilst I'm, uh, I can go around and do something else. Now it's quite a fiddly bit. Um, a bit of a pain really uh, yeah I'm definitely gonna have to uh, think of another way of doing the uh, the cloak once it uh, once it's set properly I was able to uh, fill the um, the inner edge with some green stuff so I could get a decent fit yeah I'm trying a different um, uh, tool to try and get a nice smooth finish on the inside of that cloak So just seeing this compared to the other um, tool I was using, you can see you use it in a very different way. Um, so yeah, the tool, each tool is uh, suitable for its own specific style of work. Uh, it's definitely something I need to learn. So I decided that um, because it's a power ball, it needed a, an energy pack. Um, so I just made a long single uh, core wire out of a bit of green stuff, just a nice long green stuff first uh, uh, worm and I'm uh, going to attach a thunder hammer energy pack uh, to the base of the hammer and then run that between his um, backpack and uh, the haft of the hammer. Now this is quite a fiddly bit, you need to get it to uh, position right while still soft enough to uh, hold it and glue it all at the same time so yeah it's a bit of a pain uh, trying to do these sort of things uh, I'm going to have to uh, really rethink how I've done it as uh, this was an absolute headache to uh, get it to um, hold together uh, whilst I could get it to um, the right position so I'm just blending it in there uh, just to make it um, just to give the cable somewhere to go and I'm now just uh, taking the energy pack off the uh, thunder hammer um, and just filing it down and that's going to go roughly to where the uh, power cable is going. Now this is definitely something again I could have done a little bit better um, my cuts should have definitely been neater uh, but maybe I'm being a little bit over critical I don't know uh, you guys can uh, uh, be the judge of that the weird thing about um, doing conversions like this is uh, with them all being different colours it's very hard to see the model as a whole so uh, you do need to uh, get an, uh, once, you can only really tell what it looks like after um, your first uh, your first prime spray so I've got the second piece of uh, sorry the third piece of the cloak to, get, uh, to go now I'm doing exactly the same uh, this is uh, a seam on the outside I'm trying to blend it in again uh, using the um, same rolling pin technique uh, to get it to uh, blend in with the rest of the cloak and uh, just look something a bit more natural. Obviously I'm avoiding uh, touching it with my fingers because we don't have any, on, any fingerprints all over the thing as uh, that just looks stupid. And if that's going to slide up nicely under the uh, backpack and what I'm going to do, I'm going to fi uh, finish off the backpack 
sorry, the cloak uh, with some more green stuff work to uh, make it look like it's uh, coming from the top and being held in place underneath the backpack rather than just sort of sitting halfway down his back because that would just look weird. So here we are, we've got the, um, the weapon together, got some Mark III shoulder pads including a uh, Forge World uh, Icon Duck shoulder pad and uh, the green stuff cable is setting nicely. As you can see I've just uh, positioned it so it looks like it's going into the back of the um, the energy energy pack and I'm going to build a little bit around the, uh, around the back of it as well just to uh, make it look a bit more finished. So, moment of truth as far as the cloak's concerned, does it fit right? Uh, it fits okay, and now I need to uh, finish off the uh, back um, with some green stuff just to uh, make it look like it's more natural. I've also chosen to use a very old style um, Chaos Warrior helmet, Chaos Marine helmet. I uh, felt it looked a little bit more interesting than the newer ones. Um, I wanted to uh, hark back to the older style uh, armor as well, and uh, it goes it goes kind of well with the uh, new stuff. So I've uh, done something resembling some cloak work at the top half of the um, at the top half of his, of his body, but. Uh, I've just tried to follow the curvature of the cloaks. Um, again, it's more a case of uh, getting it looking right. Uh, there was no way I was going to be able to make a full cloak um, out of green stuff, uh, but I could definitely uh, recreate uh, some natural flows. Uh, again, using the same tools, and I'm just trying to keep that um, that, that cloak looking right. I'm not going to. Um, you're not going to be able to see much of it, uh, but it, do, it is going to help finish the effect. So we've built uh, an extension onto the end of the power cable, um, the backpack, the energy cable, and now I'm just uh, blending in a little bit extra green stuff because some of the uh, blends weren't too great. I'm just trying to soften up them um, joints where the plastic meets the green stuff uh, with a bit of fresher green stuff. Uh, it's much uh, softer, put more yellow into it, uh, which was uh, Dodger's suggestion. Uh, it gives you a bit more drying time, a bit more freedom to move it around. Uh, allows it a bit more, uh, it's a bit softer. So there we are. He's now uh, primed uh, in the first um, colour. Now we do prime him again, uh, which you'll see shortly. And there we are. That is my first proper conversion. Um, there's some bits I definitely do again. Uh, I, I would like to um, have some more practice with the green stuff, and uh, I could definitely do something on the inside uh, where the bullet casing is. Uh, I'd like to do something there as well. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the dude. Uh, looks um, very fierce. So uh, I think he's going to uh, fit in well with my uh, Primaris scale world he is. So guys, what do you think of this? Uh, uh, um, is this sort of thing what uh, you do yourself? Have you got any critique, any uh, um, suggestions what I should do next time round? So uh, yeah, any, any questions and criticism you've got, please drop in the comments, just be cool to everyone. So obviously, as always, we've got some thank yous to make. And I would like to thank... Uh, the York Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, DWAC, Mark, Dave and Tom, you're our top paying Patreons. So huge thank you to you, without this, uh, without your assistance we really couldn't do, a, uh, do any of this. Also thank you to our other Patreons and also to you viewers as well, uh, because without you guys watching, uh, there would be no point in us doing this at all. Also massive thanks to the Outpost, uh, with their our affiliate link which is in the description. Uh, if you go with them, if you do order from them, please use our uh, affiliate link to, uh, our affiliate uh, links um, you get your normal 15 to 20 percent discount on all uh, G GW and hobby materials and equipment but if you go through our link we get five percent store credit at no cost to you so that's a huge help as well 
They're really good guys, uh, Sheffield based, so they're local to us. Uh, so yeah, massive thanks to them for uh, for their assistance as well. And obviously, please like, share, and subscribe if you're not already, uh, if, and you want to check us out again. If you're interested in joining our Patreon scheme, uh, check the links also in the description where you can get um, early access to all our videos and uh, and guaranteed entry into our monthly competitions as well. Uh, okay then, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ra.